dados pessoais não configuram em geral personal data in general they are not intellectual property but for several practical ends especially the authorization to be used by third parties they are similar to intellectual property the new general law of data protection has expanded the right of individuals on their da personal data and this can lead to several uh, legal disputes as we live in an environment that almost everything we do is mediated by technology and where everything is mediated by technology, it can leave undeletable traces. From the point of view of law, it can be more complex if we cover some doubts about the possibility of uh, maintaining data that are not formally authorized by the individuals in LGBT. Uh, what we concentrate is for practical use, and this already creates several controversies. In a seminar um, performed or held recently by ABPI, we have this huge judicialization since in our country we're still in the very beginning of the extrajudicial conciliation mechanisms for controversy resolution. Um, these effective chambers for arbitrations, they were adopted in Korea and in other countries to avoid um, taking to the judicial branch too much load. And similar pathways can be adopted in Brazil, could they? And also our law will uh, lead to the results that we wish to get to know that and understand the general importance and to get more intimate to the new LGBT. Uh, we count on our mediation, Renata Lisboa, to lead this panel. Good morning, everyone. For me, it's a pleasure and an honor to be here in the first online Congress by ABPI talking about such a lively topic that is so dear to me. Anyway, for this morning session, we have prepared this uh, panel to exchange experience, information, and even what would be our next steps and what we'll need to do according to this new piece of legislation that is so live, as I said, and has always to be revisited. To talk about this topic, the challenges and best practice to protect data in, under the rule of the new LGBT, we have three brilliant speakers i thank very much for your participation here to be here in this panel and we'll start with alex behmoods he is the director of one trust brazil to america latina he led the main focus to for uh, growth of the one trust here and he's responsible for operating the company in latin america uh, assuring this consistent level of quality in all aspects of the One Trust businesses. Alex, you have the floor. Thank you very much, dear Renata. And to everyone here, welcome to our panel. It is a great pleasure to start this conversation, our chat on a very important topic. For now, we are under the rule of LGPD and it is a topic that we all uh, need to talk about, about the LGBT. But it is really important to tell you that during this chat, uh, we're going to, I'm going to focus on the good practices, the use of technology to implement a, this program of LGBT. And I have a member, the representative of a company that is supplier of solutions for privacy. And I want to assure you that the whole discussion, our whole conversation will be neutral regarding the use of tools and technology. In practice, it's very important to focus in best practices. They are not only focused on the experience, the recent experience of LGBT, but also with a perspective focusing on the history of this law. And on a personal note, uh, I think it's very important to tell you that I'm the only one in the panel that are, that 
I'm not a lawyer and I'm focusing on the experience and practice of uh, privacy and I have certification in the International Association of Privacy Professionals. I'm certified in the European legislation as well as, well, uh, as a certified information privacy management manager and I'm also in the information privacy management uh, area. So let's focus on a few topics and some practical aspects of the application of LGBT. Then we're going to focus on the process and some considerations regarding discovery and data classification regarding personal data. And also how can we have this uh, impact in the strategy of the data product production that will involve as well the intellectual property and also we focus on good practice regarding safety of data and as well security of data and the benefits of intellectual property, some um, privacy policies and other contract agreements and also uh, we will move on to some good practices. On the LGPD, just to align ourselves here regarding some key aspects of LGPD, we have some important points regarding how we understand the concept of the data controller. It is the individual or entity that makes the decisions about the processing. On the other hand, this relationship between processing the personal data, we have the, the concept of the processor, the individual or entity that will process personal data on behalf of the controller. So it is well, known as a supplier, a seller in a company. So, and also we can have the data subject or holder. He is responsible in charge and, and he has the right based in the LGPD. He has the digital right to take some actions regarding the data, the personal data of him herself. And also we can talk about the processing agent that can be the controller or the processor. And so those are a few key points, some definitions of key terms in LGPD. Regarding the some legislation on that, uh, we have to remember that data processing has to be maintained in a position of transparency and need. So you need a purpose that is well defined also the holders they have to have free access to their own data and a company that is the controller has to assure the quality maintenance on the personal data for the data subject as i said also the transparency of data is very important the maintenance of uh, programs and norms for security to make sure that um, the users will have a safe experience in terms of processing the data. And also the companies and uh, the entities, they have to define a prevention approach. Also, it's mandatory, they have the liability on that to uh, provide accountability on the data processing. Regarding the rights of the holders, of the owners of the data, we have some other global uh, pieces of legislation like in Mexico, based on the federal law for data protection in Mexico. Obviously at that time, we see that we there are some rights of the holders based also in some California legislation. We can see that the rights that we see that are most frequent that we see companies being concerned will be that they have to be anonymous, the personal data when requested, this type of uh, right. And also we have to remember that in a few cases, we have to have a legal basis for this data treatment. It had had a consent. There is a strategy for data deletion as well. 
So the concept of portability, data portability is really, really interesting because it's a requirement where a company has to make available all the data on a data holder so that uh, they can change an account, for instance, if it's operating an insurance program, the holder of the data is allowed to take this data and send to a different company to change the service provider. So in the practice of the um, data subject rights, this is a topic that involves everyone in a company. So it's not only a legal topic, but it is an operational topic as well or issue. And the companies, they are designing um, programs to serve the rights of the data holders. There are some ways to serve that they have to be considered by the companies. Some concepts on the obligations of the data controllers, they have to provide access to the information in a responsible way regarding the uh, communication of a certain amount of data to the data holders. Some other obligations that are interesting and must be taken into account from the legal point of view. Um, for instance, um, you have to create impact reports for the data, personal data production. Some companies, there are global companies and they have this responsibility regarding the LGPD. They have to perform the DPIA, data, data privacy impact assessment is very good to assess the risks for instance, in using a high level technology to produce or to treat data. So it's not only an analysis, risk analysis, but also accountability. For now, the LGPD has to show the understanding on the uh, obligation to treat these data and reduce the risks regarding the freedom rights of the data holder. Also, there is a an officer that will be assigned in the company, the DPO in English, which is, I think recently I saw some estimates that uh, countries like Brazil, they need more than 50,000 vacancies or jobs for DPOs in the companies in Brazil. It is a very high level of demand and at least under the enforcement of the LGP. Regarding their interaction with other pieces of legislation, if we talk about Brazil, it's important to mention that we have a balance that has to be clarified regarding the interaction between LGPD and the civil framework. We have a conflict today in Europe for now, we have not been, we have not clarified that yet the Privacy Act here. So we have to look at the law that has already been passed in Europe and the legislation process in privacy regulation that we'll need, as we said before, we'll need the legal base that can be used by data processing. It's a single consent. It's an interesting um, topic, but we are expecting some clarification on that and some guidance also from the LGBT. Uh, based on the uh, Brazilian contract law, we see the confidentiality risk and trans technology transfer as well. So we see an overlap of some of the key concepts of the pieces of legislation in Brazil, the civil, civil framework, the internet rights, and we see the existence of intellectual property uh, um, statutes. We have to remember some concepts and requirements when we create contracts. So we have to 
establish the data protection means not only personal but also confidentiality that is something that can be sensitive to a company is not only covering personal data but it can also present a risk in itself to the company we have to keep that in this intellectual property maintenance program So my purpose here, this was my attempt to talk as a lawyer, but now let's focus on the practice where I, I am more savvy. Uh, we talked about the inventory mapping and data discovery. We have some concepts that are really important for the companies in the, and the legal departments to understand about. Article 37 that is already to, oriented to creating and maintaining the record of activities when you process data for those that worked in the GDPR uh, time or term, to create not only a report on that for data processing, but as well the mapping of data personal data, but you as had to be very comprehensive, you had to remember three important concepts, the assets, the technology resources in the company that were developed by the company, and also the technology assets regarding uh, the tools where you're processing personal data. It can be a supplier of at Active Directory, e-commerce, CRN. So those would be the assets where the resources are treating or processing the personal data. Regarding the integration of uh, departments and business operations, you have to combine the use of assets with the business processes. So what are the business processes led by marketing team? where they are collecting information on, about leads and uh, human resources, uh, who are the candidates for the jobs and you are collecting the CVs to create a profile of that candidate. So those are examples of processes where the departments, they treat the data and they can also create risk uh, in that daily routine operation. The third concept that is also very important to remember, to keep in mind that uh, raises the risk regarding privacy, security, and data violation will be the suppliers, the service providers, um, technology services, and consultancy. So all these aspects, we all these aspects, the suppliers, they have to be reliable resources. And, but you can share the personal data also as sensitive data that not necessarily they are personal data. And it's important to establish a series of uh, rules and maintenance programs regarding the data transfer to the suppliers as well. You have to have categories uh, to um, establish the risk level very high because you have a lot of sensitive or personal data or a smaller or lower level where you have more sensitive uh, categories like financial uh, information and on um, medical issues as well as safety or security for medical data. They are all examples of data that can be transferred to suppliers. And this combination of assets and to business processes and suppliers, when the company is mapping all that, will create a more complete mapping. So the process of assessing personal data inventories, how is that done? What are the key processes, the key issues you need to remember? You need to know what is the time frame for data collection, who we're collecting data from and uh, where and how we're collecting it and how it's been collected. What are the ways in which you can communicate the data being collected and the purpose and why it's necessary to communicate that. About the storage of data, where is that? In Brazil? outside of the country, outside of the continent, 
and how is it stored? You need also to remember about the retention period. That's very important. And in some sectors and in some industries, there are cases in which the company needs to do some maintenance and keeping of data for a longer period of time. In the financial industry, in several cases, you have seven years at least for the maintenance. And it could be established based on some legislation that is already valid and has been enforced, like LGPD. What is the definition of processing? That also needs to be related to the purpose that has been communicated by the data holder, because processing cannot be changed. For instance, if the legal framework being used for data processing is consent. Next to transfer, that is also very interesting. For the time being, everybody is awaiting the LGTPD guidance about international transfer of data and standard contractual clauses as a measure of international transfer between companies that already have binding corporate rules and how we can use those in some cases uh, for transfer mechanisms. That is all awaiting a consent from the holder. Well, that's a topic under discussion. We all understand that this is another project sent by the Senate about a requirement for localization of personal data. If that happens, it would be important at this time and age to map international transfers to have them all transferred. And what about disposal of data? Which data are being disposed of by the company? And when data are being disposed, we need to remember that data needs to be treated adequately, defining when it should be disposed and discarded. We should remember that companies must collect, store, and keep adequately data outside the company, outside uh, company's premises, and outside the country. Now that we have defined a little more good practices about mapping and the discovery of data, let's focus a bit on some practices regarding security and notification about data violation. How is that going to impact risk minimization, and what are the risks? Based on Article 46 of LA, controllers and processors should adopt technical and administrative measures to protect and ensure that personal data are not an subject to unauthorized access and accidental illegal destruction, loss, change, or other type of inadequate processing or illegal processing of data. All measures of physical security or technical security are not, shouldn't be just a, a silver bullet, just one measure. Because in practice, an inadequate dissemination might occur if an employee has inadequate access to data. Uh, or is dealing with that piece of data in an inadequate way, something which is not clear to the holder in terms of what is adequate policy. So awareness, raising the awareness of all employees is very important. This is going to establish standards and controls for security and protection of data in the corporate level more specific controls now that should be implemented are the following. Right now, everyone is awaiting a more a clear definition about technical standards that are acceptable in accordance with 
the legislation. In some cases, companies are basing themselves, basing their data protection systems based on like ISO 27001, adopting some standards and techniques to minimize data loss, minimum access measures to, ex to ensure that there is minimal access to data by other companies. The implementation process for security by design is also an existing obligation according to the LGPD. And security by design means that in all processes and at all steps of the life cycle and development of a new tool, for instance, it would take into account specific measures for protection. So as to ensure that the company is verifying and using adequate controls for minimal access during the whole process while doing enhancements to its own tools. Processing system structures must be assigned to understand uh, security measures, making sure that all those involved are going to use those measures, that data are protected by encryption. And next to liability, the company must ensure also a inadequate level of availability and governance. If the company is establishing a security committee for data protection, it must also remember that the team in charge of the LGPD and data protection must be involved with the DPO or the Chief Information Security Officer, the CISO, the legal team, the security team, all those involved, those who will be in charge in every department, they should all be involved. And I think we will address this in detail later in the next presentation, perhaps. So now going into the privacy policies and contractual agreements, you should understand about that, that changes need a writing style that is clear so as to avoid as much as possible the legalese the structure of information also should involve smaller information chunks and navigable headings that will support the data protection and security policies. The presentation should also follow a general visual style with a just-in-time presentation about privacy policies to make sure that the holder knows how to use personal data. And next to that, regarding management of supplier risk, this is an important issue regarding supplier agreements. Contracts should be enforced before transferring data. There should be some information making sure that the data operator will not use that for any other means. And also you must make sure that the agreement between companies is clearly defining what confidentiality requirements are, what the use is, and limit dissemination of data. Now very rapidly, I'm going to talk about good practices and final comments. First of all, the organization must define some technical standards and organizational issues to make sure that data processing is within the lines 
defined by the company. You must establish who will be in charge of privacy issues. And in some cases, you should mitigate and assess risks in a proactive fashion to make sure that protection of data is ensured. Another important issue is companies who have privacy certifications represent 82% of companies that do not have it. That information was sent by Cisco. At the end, using the LGPD program based on good practices and standards and controls and operations Companies can create a comprehensive program on data protection, which will cover all times and situations in Latin America, Europe, North America, and Asia Pacific. Well, that was all I had to say. And now, Hinata, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Alex, so much. Pedro already said that your Portuguese is excellent, so don't worry about it. I will now... Did somebody say something? No? Okay. I will now give the floor to Lucas, who will now give us the point of view of a large company and how a large company is dealing with this. And uh, since when you started, how you're doing the adequacy, maintenance, and control since this law came into force and how it impacted your businesses. Lucas Global is Global Data Privacy Manager of AB MBEV, and he is an expert in contractual law. He has eight years' experience in that area and the, in the last three years he's been trying to adapt LGPD and GDPR to his company Ambev the largest uh, beer company in the world right well it's an honor to have you here with us let's clarify that this issue of data privacy affects all companies that are doing B2B mainly doing businesses with other companies and not necessarily to the with the consumer only. Yes, Hinata, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. Basically, as Hinata just said so well, I will try and summarize to you what I believe would be a good practice. There is no right or wrong in this world of data protection. You all know this very well. My intention here is just to show to you a bit of my experience. And as Hinata said, I'm an expert in contractual right by FGV. I've been working for eight years as an attorney in the businesses or legal offices working specifically with businesses. Now I am the global data privacy manager with Ambev, the largest beer company in the world, controller of Ambev and the larger beer manufacturing companies worldwide. Since I joined ABI, one of my focuses has been, in addition to data processing and control, has been trying to adapt to the GDPR. The GDPR was about to be approved when I joined the company, and now I'm trying to help the Ambev team in Brazil also, trying to adapt their in-house guidelines to the LGPD. Since Ambev has headquarters in Leuven in Belgium, we used as a global standard the European law, the GDPR. That is why since 2017, I've been acting 
in this area. Oh, well, basically, I'd like to talk about the two sides of this LGPD. Several people, after the initial discussion, or rather over the, the years, while they were discussing the LGPD and more intensely over the last months, there was that question, the doubt, when is it really being enforced and should it be enforced? Several people were concerned and thought, well, okay, it's a law that will hinder my business now. It's come to those obstacles to interrupt my business opportunities. Well, I, my personal opinion is that this is not the reality. When we talk about the general law for data protection, the LGPD, we're talking about protection of fundamental freedoms and rights. And by doing so, we can encourage economical and technological development. I bring here two statements that reflect the reality when we talk about LGPD, the GDPR, and other pieces of legislations that are dealing with data protection, like the SPPI, which was recently enforced in California. So these three main issues forced companies to try and organize the information they have at home what they have in-house in their own companies. And by following some order and data, there was a new value creation, something that was hidden actually behind that piece of data. What is that? That presented a challenge, which is to implement a governance program for privacy and personal data protection. This is the main challenge. As you might have seen in Alex's presentation, that's not easy. It is extremely complex, actually. It's not something you can do overnight. It is not something that involves just legal or IT departments in a certain organization. You also have the problem of how big the company is. So even small companies, that are not organized at all in terms of their personal or business data up to large corporations like ABI or even larger corporations, companies that are perhaps already dealing with personal data where their core business is that you could mention Google, Facebook as examples of that. So this is the main challenge of all of these companies. Basically, when we talk about governance here, we have to develop and consolidate this governance program in personal data privacy uh, that shows some requirements that here I understand as being seven. In my opinion, we have seven requirements. There will be the commitment of the organization to adopt uh, internal processes and policies that will assure the compliance with the good practices and standards related to data, personal data protection. Besides that, we also have the following item is has to be applicable to the set of personal data in that organization, regardless of the um, provision. We have initiatives uh, from uh, companies, so applications, websites, projects. So regardless of the provision or the availability of the organization, it has to be applied to all set of data. 
So we have to adapt also to the structure of the organization, the sensitivity of the data that is being treated by the organization under the control of the organization, regardless of the uh, mode of collection for the data. So we've been talking about the legal basis when we talk about the LGBT or other pieces of legislation regarding data protection in the world. We have to have this control regardless of the collection mode. We have to establish some policies and safeguards as well based on systematic assessments for the risk uh, to privacy and the impact to privacy. So we can talk about that uh, impact report. We have to have this goal to establish this relationship with the data subject in a transparent relationship, uh, um, establishing these mechanisms for this relationship. So when we talk about the data subject, when the, he, she has a request, we have to serve that request somehow on personal data. How can I say, not the use, but they they have the right and they can use this right. And we have to treat that in an effective way. It has to be in the, integrated to the general structure of the organization governance. How is that? This is, in my opinion, is an extremely uh, disputable piece of um, legislation here. I'm acting on that as of 2019 on, uh, the leadership started to understand how important it is to protect personal data, that eventually a company or an organization will collect and process. And this ended up by uh, raising this uh, importance or this awareness in the leadership, and it has been incorporated in the governance, not only in uh, only in ABI, but also in other companies. And also, we have to count on response plans in case of incidents and remediation. We have to train them to train the employee, employees in this type of plan. And this is critical from my point of view when we deal with governance. So what would be the solution? The solution is to translate the requirements of LGBT into measurable actions that can be understood throughout a framework. From that, it has to be very clear This was my disclaimer in the beginning. We have several methods, several solutions. Solutions, there's no right and wrong here. But in ABI, particularly, we have worked as such. We have translated the LGBT requirements, the main principles into actions, tangible actions that can be understood not only from a legal point of view and IT point of view, but also from the point of view of other areas like uh, staff people, marketing people, or um, the staff. And those are areas that collect and process a large amount of personal data. So when we work on this framework. Initially, we started in 2018 with the first framework with 32 items, and then we decreased that number, and we finally cascaded that to all our business areas in the group. And we gave them a freedom in this business unit uh, throughout the globe so that they could adjust or adapt this framework to their, to their local pieces of legislation. As we well known, we adopted the GDPR as the basic regulation, the, the regulation that will be the basis of our work, because we consider that it is the most uh, complete, uh, comprehensive, and at the same time restrictive. So if we had to adjust this framework, if we had to adapt the framework, 
we just would need if a local business unit had to adjust this framework would be uh, last in a less restrictive way so where should we start from we have to assess and i'm talking about assessment and awareness and how can we translate translate that into actions so we need to perform lectures and internal workshops pointing out the main concerns regarding data protection the regulations and the effect that they will have in the organization many people don't know what is the general law on data protection they don't know what is the gpr what is uh, ccpa so we have worked together with our local teams in our business units performing the lectures and workshops that I talked about. I also understand that when we talk about assessment and awareness, we, we need kickoff meetings to define the internal team that will help in this uh, process to uh, adjust the piece of legislation and make them familiar with the project um, tools and methodologies. So it's really important to list or to appoint a person in daily intensive, like marketing people, finance areas, um, people that can help us to uh, adjust and adapt the legislation. So we have to train, we have to guide them regarding the requirements and the principles of the legislation and to make them help us in a way that any initiative that we eventually think about um, or that specific area wants to launch that it can be somehow presented to us and as a team oriented to data protection, we can, at the end of the day, uh, show the necessary adjustments to that initiative. I can tell you that inside our company, we had two nice initiatives um, that we, this year, that we have called Digital Ethics Academy and also Digital Ethics roadshow as a dig this digital ethics academy as the name already explains we had several lectures to specific areas and we built this specific material we have developed for marketing for the people team and we have presented several issues and i can tell you about like a difference, different inspections that we had abroad and some fines that were uh, applied and how it happened and the investigation that was made by a, a data protection uh, entity or agency and the fine that was finally charged. So the roadshow, as I said, is broader is more generic and we took that to our business units uh, with other areas that are less data intensive some more um, some uh, broader concepts on data protection the second point would be how can we identify the data that is involved so process mapping here once again we need this close contact with the other areas, understanding what they are. So we have to map in details the data processing activities that are relevant, also the flows, the workflows for those activities, and the relation with suppliers and partners, the internal documents that are relevant to those activities. And we have to ask for any supplementary uh, pieces of, of uh, documentation, of information 
to help us understand as an X-ray analyzing the activity. We have to have an inventory of a certain area and checking who are the third parties. We have to ask for the contracts that were signed with the third parties. Uh, are we going to need any adjustment on this contract? Also information on security of this uh, initiative specifically. So it is a full x-ray exam of everything that is happening. The third point is what is not compliant with the LGBT? After the mapping, we're going to perform a gap analysis so that we can assess what are the risks that that certain initiative might offer that it can bring to the company. Here we analyze the risk of um, uh, violation or infringement uh, regarding the data subject. So we have to map all this and taking into account the business model, as I said before, my core business in ABI is not consumer data. It's not only that. We are the larger beer producer in the world. We have B2B, B2C operations. So we have to look at the business model, where the initiative is allocated and check the need to maybe uh, close or stop a risk. And also we have to check the technological resources that are available, the governance and the culture of that organization. We have finally to uh, and show the best initiatives uh, based on a specific piece of legislation and decreasing the risks in relation to that piece of legislation. When I talk about a global operation as we have, we end up by working with the local teams in the business units and providing them total autonomy so that they can assess each and every one of the initiatives. They will work on the impact report, personal data impact report. And we provide also this autonomy so that based on the local legislation, some uh, global premises that we in the global team, we convey to them and they can check the risks and present uh, types of uh, remediations or remedies for that. So we need a planning. How can we organize that? We need the planning. We need a, an action plan and a um, of schedule to implement all of that. Basically, you need a team for data protection. You have to pinpoint the risks, the remedies, what remedies can be considered of uh, low, medium or high risk, attack the high risk and work with specific people in a certain area with, and the purpose is to help them. You, as a member of a team of data protection, you can help to implement what you are offering as a remedy, what you are presenting to a certain area. Here, it is important to tell you that eventually, and maybe this is one of the um, difficulties you're facing right now is that you have the law. The law exists. It must be complied with not only LGBT, but the other pieces of legislation all over the world. And it's difficult sometimes to uh, tell a marketing team that is data driven and tell them you have to stop that. You have to do it differently. And so it's diff difficult in a daily routine to get their attention despite the training sessions that we have that we show how important it is and this should be done and what should not be done and so on and so forth. But it is really important that at a certain point you have to link this uh, annual uh, goals uh, of a corporation. You have to link that to a data protection um, target. So this is a way to force them and to bring or 
catch their attention. So that person from a certain area will come closer to you. And, and you can help the data protection people to, to implement what really has to be done. After that, what should be changed? We call that the implementation itself. So we have several things. So we need to um, develop and implement uh, products and we have practices. We have to develop and update all the documentation. Sometimes we will um, have reviews of the contract. We'll see that there is no provision on data protection. So we need to have an attachment to that uh, contract and uh, or maybe a new contract has to be signed. We have to renegotiate, have a renegotiation and uh, because maybe there are costs involved regarding data protection. So we are always aiming at the adequacy, adequacy to the uh, data protection legislation. Another point that is important as well is that the implementation, as I told you, it can be, um, uh, quotes here, uh, easy. As Alex has shown us, it is complex. But for me, it is the easiest part. What is really complex is to monitor everything. You have to make sure that that sand castle that you have built, built that apparently is perfect, in perfect shape, that will not collapse. And subject to any external factor that may impact the castle. So that's what we call monitoring. And monitoring is critical and is complex. You have to imagine when we talk about an inventory and process mapping, you in the data protection area, you have to make sure that all the activities, all the processes that collect and process personal data, that they are mapped in your base, in your database. They all have to be assessed from the data protection point of view and have to be remediated regarding the data protection approach. So you have to make sure that the organization will maintain the activities in a proper way and in compliance with the data protection legislation, even facing some changes uh, that might occur um, and uh, regarding the initial um, goal of that initiative. Maybe you have an initiative, you map the initiative, you have the rem remedies for that. That's beautiful from the personal data protection point of view is great, you're okay with that initiative, but someone that owes that initiative, that owns that initiative, they uh, decide to make a change. And then they start to process personal data going beyond what is necessary, or maybe going further uh, uh, regarding what has been um, informed before. So it has to be readjust and reassessed. So I have to give you this tip because you have to um, regularly, um, um, every now and then you have to review the initiative and this will demand the most in the area and will also demand more in terms of communication between the areas. So basically, this is the framework we have just used. I have tried to summarize about uh, raising awareness, mapping processes, gap analysis, planning, implementation and monitoring. All those steps are part of actions. Actions within a specific framework we have built for our organization. And then an important part of that is the action on the part of different areas in the in the business. Very often they ask me, well, you've been working on this since 2017, only the LGPD is applicable for us, and only now has it been put in force. And we need to adapt that to the company we haven't begun before for several reasons. So these are some of the areas that I believe are essential when we are to adapt to the LGPD. I'm talking about the 
high administration, we need to talk about shareholders and uh, the type of business that it is and how the group is organized. According to the LGPD, just as the GDPR, you need to establish who a DPO will be. You need to nominate him and train the management team, implement uh, policies for data protection and information security. That is extremely complex. It requires not only work on the part of compliance and legal together with IT, but different areas are involved in our organization. It involves several areas, several functions, several approvals and documents needed to be going back and forth, compliance and legal. Well, here, I think we really have, we play an important role. I'm talking about Lucas as a lawyer and we have contract analysis, analyzing reviews to contracts signed with different suppliers and subcontractors, analyzing whether or not they should be adapted, inspecting initiatives through the mapping of processes, establishing the action plan, working on what I, Alex mentioned, privacy by design and privacy by default. When we have privacy by design, you need to have this action plan. It makes it easier for the compliance and legal departments, but also for different functional areas. If you've been working with this since the very beginning, then you can present a rem remediation plan that is lean and e easily implementable. And uh, IT, well, this is where you are going to work on security by design and by default. And also you're going to help in data breach or data incident responses. Human resources, well, protection of data of your own employees. As Alex said, when you have a selection and recruitment process, how are that how is that data going to be collected and stored in your database? And marketing, how are you going to do data collection? How are you going to treat that data? So as to establish your advertising guidelines. So in my opinion, these are the areas and the people that should be involved since the very beginning of an adequacy process. Now very rapidly, about to conclude, what are the results expected? When we talk about results, we're talking about aligning the organization as a whole. Here, you should align the organization to global standards of the personal data protection systems and legislation showing that your company is organized not only from the point of view of LGPD but from the point of view of different regulations and international standards. It establishes a competitive advantage. You raise the awareness of your com competitors and partners that your organization is valuing and protecting your personal data. That is a competitive edge. It shows that your company cares about all data that is under its control, adding value. It adds value to businesses, products, and services supplied. So you should work better with the data that is being collected and processed. With more agility in working with that data, however, in a secure fashion. Reputation? Well, in doing all that, you will have a higher reputation, a better reputation with your partners and customers. And finally, I have here this chart that shows basically that reliability results in the possibility of a purchase. If you have a plan for data protection, 
aiming at protection and security of personal data collected by you, that is an indication that the possibility or probability of purchase by consumers will increase. This is data from Gemini. I think this data is from 2018 or 19. product quality, availability of products, and cybersecurity and data privacy as third, the third item. So the work that your data, treating data protection and IT and other areas, all that is being monitored by consumers. And finally, positioning of the purchase. I'm not going into detail here because I'm about to finish, but it shows that if you, as an organization, as a corporation, if you abide by data protection and you care about data security, you are going to promote purchase and increase the probability of purchase by certain consumers. So I'd like to leave you with this final piece of data and basically that is what I had to present to you. Thank you, Hanata. Thank you all from ABPI for the invitation. I'd like to give the floor to Hanata and Carla. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Lucas. Several people have sent positive comments about your presentation and Alex's, and also about Alex's Portuguese, by the way. This activity is extremely multidisciplinary, as we have seen. It is the legal point of view, not only having, however, the legalese and the legal people involved. The operational and technical areas have always been a priority. They have been chosen by men, right? By male figures. And what I have been seeing, however, that's a, that's quite nice. I've seen more women involved, more and more women. So that is just to highlight and enforce what I have said. I'd like to call now Carla Manso. She is an attorney, the DPO of CompuGraph, for 12 years, it is a technology company with a female attorney working. And she will share with us her journey, her life story, and how the LGPD affected their work, the challenges faced, what she's been doing internally and with her external customers. Carla? Hello everyone, I apologize, but although I am a woman in IT, I've done everything I could and my camera is not simply not working. I really do apologize. Anyway, I shall continue in spite of that so as not to delay the panel. I was very happy and honored to be invited sharing this panel with Lucas, Renata, and Gobo, as well as Alex, to talk here about this hot topic. It's not a fad because data protection has been important for quite some time at LGPD, as Renata told me before, is a living legislation different from other pieces of legislation we have, we have in our code, it is a multidisciplinary law and we need here support from all areas to have it work so that the machine goes on. I've been for 12 years at CompuGraph as an attorney. It is a data security IT company in the market for more than 38 years. It is totally focused on data security. It is full into it. Everyone is involved with privacy and data protection because we understand that 
information security and data protection are two things that walk hand in hand. I say this with my customers. CompuGraph is the one trust partner through Alex, and we see this in all our customers. It's useless to have a tool for privacy and data management unless you also have data security working in place. You need tools and guidelines so as to have that fully in place in your company. This is extremely important. I've been facing this for the last year or so. In-house, we've seen this, how the DPO should be involved with different areas and with other countries, customers as well. It's like we said, we need the board support. We need support on the part of all our employees so as to get into it fully. And the role of the DPO, we need to navigate in all areas of the company. And for all those of you who are listening to us, if you wish to be a good DPO, if you wish to not be the last to know about that little tool that somebody bought and just you didn't know about it, you said, oh, okay, I'm in compliance, I'm the DPO, and I don't know about it. To avoid that, you need to have a good relationship. I see this with my team, with my technical team, with my boys and girls, those working with me at CompuGraph. I see that I'm nothing without them, you know? This is quite clear to me. Sometimes the DPO is loaded with this responsibility, but actually this is a shared responsibility. It's useless it, to want to take it forward on your own. This is essential so that you can see this clearly so that the LGPD is not something with uh, beginning, middle and end. It is something that will continue. It will persist. You need to improve that. We don't know how it's going to be in practice. When the LGPD is in force, we've had some issues regarding lawsuits. And all that changes the way we think and act uh, and our internal processes. So this is how I feel about this legislation. The LGPD is a living legislation from that point of view. People still need to be aware of it and learn, have that be embedded in their culture, not think that personal data is a frivolous thing. It is the cornerstone of any company. When you order a pizza, your data is important up to when uh, you are dealing with a large company. All business people need to have that in mind. You need to take very, better care of personal data. It had become a frivolous thing, right? And we found that all these cases, all the principles that the legislation, about the legislation mentioned by Lucas and Alex, these principles must be complied with. It's useless to have 
this beautiful tool, a beautiful compliance program and a, and a framework, unless people are aware of it, unless you touch on their culture and mindset, unless they are aware that they need to be careful with personal data. This is the privacy by design and privacy by default concept. It starts at the very birth of, it, of the process. We need to look at ourselves and every single collaborator, every single clerk, the person receiving an invoice in the purchasing department up to our CEO, we should all be aware of it. This feeling about personal data must be completely embedded in the mindset of companies. This is my point of view, my experience. Now, Carla and Lucas. I am following the chat. What was, how did you start? How did it work? How did it work with Lucas? And the mapping? How did you be, do you begin? I think we should talk about this. What we did now, Hanata, was basically working constantly. We were working with IT. So we have IT security and compl compliance, a department within our company, and they are the ones working on and uh, collecting uh, our inventory for the whole company. We were working closely with them, collecting the inventory, and then we went and tried to validate that in every area to check and see whether there was any missing initiative or something that had been decommissioned and was still there. After the kickoff, the initial mapping, we went then to the owners of every initiative and, and try and understand what was going on to check and see whether they were capturing and processing personal data. And after that kickoff, like you said, we started providing training courses, holding training courses. In 2017, we gave one training course and then in the next year, we started holding different training courses, including e-learning. And then the following year, we had quick reminders regarding data protection items, who's the controller, who's the processor, who does what. So be careful with uh, suppliers, careful with data processing. And in 2019, we also launched initiatives to try and raise the awareness of all areas with an animation training. We hired a company abroad to have an animation, you know, like a cartoon with uh, reproducing specific situations that might happen in different areas. So like a notebook that was stolen um, or lost, what should we do? And what am I subject to? What could be the impact? Can I save uh, data in a specific uh, folder of my computer so that it is inside the company's system in the OneDrive system, uh, any other cloud that the company uses. So this was the two fronts that we started attacking first. Well, there are several questions here, but, um, and I love that. Uh, well, I have to ask that. What was the first tool that you have used when it all started to perform the mapping? Sometimes people think that they need something 
that it's really rocket science and you uh, told us that it had something there. Well, this is a good point to be raised here. In 2017, we had this um, extremely manual control and we had thousands of Excel spreadsheets and SharePoint for the data control. And then we just started to discuss the need for a platform as we started. So one trust companies like one trust, they brought solutions for the companies. And at the end of 2018, we chose the one trust and we build a global questionnaire so that we could uh, run all our PIAs. And in 2019, we started to use the one trans as a single source of truth uh, for a company. So inside the one trust, we have the inventory, we have the impact reports, the PIAs, as people know very well. We have several models, modules, and we have some business units that use what we call data subject access requests, so we can um, split the requests of the um, data subjects through the one trust as well. So it has been a very useful tool to um, lead our project, as Carla said, it's not a project that has the beginning, uh, middle and end. We, well, we use the name, the term project, but it's a continuity of this program for data protection. So Excel, you all have, so you can start with Excel. And if things start to grow, one of the as tool like the one that they use, it should be used to guarantee all the requirements. Daniela has asked, and I will um, ask Carla specifically, what are the advices for the professionals that need to learn more about privacy for the, to act in any area? Well, I have this ping pong with the people from the chat and the panel. Well, talking to Lucas, and I really thought that their idea was excellent to have one professional in each area assigned. So first to understand as a DPO, to understand how marketing uh, operates, um, HR as well. So it's very nice to have someone there that knows the process very well so that you can understand what is the risk what is the data risk that you have? Maybe an HR or marketing manager, they don't have this vision, but it is data, a CV, uh, and sometimes it's not that. So being close by and or assigning someone in the team to perform the, a follow-up and the assessment in each area is really important because sometimes what can be silly, let's say, it's not to someone else. So as we know the legislation and we go deeper on that, we can see the risk. So following up close to all with all the areas, it's really critical in the process to have someone inside the company that can have this vision of the whole process as a whole. Great. So uh, getting to know the core business is really a nice tip. Pedro Vilena, he's our professor in the um, privacy course. And in this multinational uh, um, environment, how can you check all the decisions that were made in the management process? Well, I can help on that. Basically, Pedro, answering to your question, we are a multinational company, a global company, so first of all, we sat together and we decided what would be the legislation that will be adopted in the global level to start to work, as I said before in my presentation, to start to work on a framework. Once the framework was built, we had, and we still have, constant meetings with our business units. So before the year starts, we have presented a framework to 
all our business units and we have specific discussions taking into account the local legislation. So when I talk about Brazil and I talk about United States, we know that in United States, you have the CCPA that basically most companies, even if they are not in California, they are um, uh, complying with CCPA. In Brazil, we have the LGPD. So maybe my framework is a, a little bit uh, too much for certain business units. So we sit together, we present the framework and the areas will assess the framework and check the need to perform some adjustments as we had in 2020 when we presented the framework to all our business units some of them like brazil and united states they told us look here this and this is not applicable it's too much for my business unit so uh, we should do like this or like that because it's different. If I use the LGPD, LGPD is stating such and such. So this was basically what we did. Sorry to interrupt you, Lucas. We are running here. Carlos Henrique Ribeiro, he's asking how you have structure the due diligence process to implement uh, regarding suppliers and partners. Basically, we have a due diligence, diligence uh, process in the compliance team checking issues related to compliance. When we finally interact with the new uh, supplier or a new um, provider, service providers, we work with the procurement team, very close to the procure, procurement team, because they know, depending on the object of that contract, you have to talk with the data protection team, we, in this case, that will be us. And they are working with the compliance team and we have to check the need to, um, to add a specific clauses or maybe a data processing agreement have to be signed. So we worked with procurement to adjust our models, our contract standards. So we have included uh, related clauses and also provisions related to data protection in the contract. Excellent. I know that we could spend a lot of time talking about that. So I would like to answer the questions. Aline Pereira Pedro has asked, and also Milena, they want to know how was the training process? And Milena more specifically asking if you have worked with the uh, training for to implement the LGPD. I will ask you both, you and Carla, to answer quickly so that we can go to our final question. Can you repeat, Renata? Training on what? They want to know how was the, or how is the process to raise awareness and training, performing webinar, was the emails, and also Lucas talked about the animation and how you do that. And Elena also raised the issue of the, how you train for the implementation. I think this can be in our final question. So in the company, I'm talking about the company graph. We have already this mindset uh, uh, to work with uh, information services. So several cases that we have in our customers, we have that in our DNA. So when we hire new employees and we make them understand what it means through lectures and even the daily routine of the job and they are aware at the end of the day, they are aware of this data protection, especially now with LGPD at full speed. Um, we have several niches and several groups that we have uh, with our managers and we are disseminating, we are communicating knowledge because sometimes people, they just don't know. They don't know, is that really it or not? They have some doubts. So this is like a round table so that we can discuss because there is a lot of doubts to be clarified. So. Well, we try to really go hands-on to see if there are doubts and we discuss in, in the round table, as I said, and this is a good path. 
Marcus would like to add? Well, I would just like to add, sorry, Renata, we have worked with PPTs in the beginning, then we had the PPT uh, uploaded in our platform for e-learning, then we changed and then moved to the e-reminders, and then the admission training, as I said, and he has what you said, the gamification. The person can choose inside the admission training what would be the um, option. And we can tell them if it's right or wrong, for instance. Well, we're coming to an end. And to close, we have to say that to keep the inventories and all the initial scope, it is really necessary to have several measures internal measures for the company or in the company and what would be the actions the tips um to perform this maintenance and if we could tell us in the case of milena considering gamification as a way to maintain and keep privacy i think that's it how are you dealing with that and the next steps. In this case, we talked really close to all the areas next year, as Carla has uh, told us already, we are working with some champions, with some data intensive areas. We are establishing targets for data protection with these people. And we are working with maybe a lawyer and someone from IT security and compliance to help us in these areas to make us aware of everything that is happening and what should be done. This is basically it. And regarding, regarding gamification, as I said, we have that in our online training in the animation format, and we have uh, targets to be reached to, up to the management. They have to perform this training to a certain date this year. They will have, they will get into trouble. No, that is, that's not it, but we're going to discuss with them and go after them to perform the training. Carla and Alex, really quick, because we don't want to uh, stay longer than our time here. Well, I really loved uh, Lucas' idea. I'm going to adopt that in CompoGraph. We already have, already have the gamification with our customers, but I think it's really nice. It's fun. It's light. And don't forget that we cannot make LGPD uh, to become a hindrance. Now, we want to make the businesses flow, and this is my tip. I think that a good practice would be the following, to create a report on the data breaches, on the incidents in each area, and to keep the record, these records. At the end of the year, you should reward people to the, reward the team that has the lowest number of incidents. If this is important to, to uh, make this topic, to remember that this topic is about human beings and reward them and to motivate the process. So I really wanted to stay here forever. Thank you very much. And uh, I'd like to thank the organizing committee and Louise Edgar. And in this atypical year, we have been uh, watching the efforts of BPI to be more and more present and everybody else that work with intellectual property. So thank you, Alex, Carla, Lucas, and to everyone that is here today, listening, participating. And here I'd like to congratulate you all. Thank you very much. Stay safe. Good afternoon. Bye-bye everyone.
importante, o que é verdadeiramente importante para nós. Entendemos que fazemos parte de um grande ecossistema e que cada um depende dos demais. O desafio é aprender juntos os novos caminhos da transformação digital. Fazer diferença com inovação, empatia e coragem. É com esse espírito que a equipe da LD Soft está aqui pronta para ajudar você a fazer cada vez mais pelo seu cliente. Oferecendo meios para você trabalhar com mais produtividade e eficiência, mesmo nas condições inesperadas do trabalho totalmente remoto. Nossas ferramentas oferecem aquilo que você precisa, para dar atenção a tudo que realmente importa e que só você pode fazer. Assim, ter tempo para oferecer ao seu cliente os resultados de excelência que ele sabe que vai receber de você. Por isso, vamos continuar firmes, para que em breve possamos destampar nossos sorrisos e comemorarmos as novas conquistas juntos nos desafios que estão por vir. LD Soft, potencializando o universo jurídico através da tecnologia.